Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well, today is a very important day because Nady is going to take possession of her new garage. Now this is an exciting day for Nady, but before she can actually take possession of the garage, I have to build it. So without further delay, I'll let's go down to the bench and see how I make this amazing garage for Nady. A few short years ago, I made a video on how to scale up 187th scale buildings in HO scale, so model railway scale, and uh, convert them into 124th, 125th scale buildings. So the building that I had in that video, which you can see scrolling up along here, is called the Cab Company, and it was made by Small Town USA. And it's basically a kit consisting of five pieces. So you get the front wall shown here, two side walls, the back wall, and then a roof that goes over the top. And it also came with this. This is like a, I don't know, I, I wouldn't really call it a decal sheet, because what you're supposed to do is you know, cut these windows out and glue them into the back. It's not a water slide or anything. But here we have the cab company sign right there, as well as one that's supposed to go on the side of the building. And then there's outside signs you can use, parking and back, unloading only, pickups only, loading zone, and then the hours of the business, 8 to 5. So I thought this, you know, in the old video I was just doing this for fun, but now that I look at it, I think this might be a good little beginner garage for Nady's business because it has a basic door right here, a window, and a small entry door. So this would be like her little office in here. And I was thinking of uh, making an apartment up in the top. But then somebody was saying, oh, I should get the hoist in there. Well, if I put the hoist in there, the car is going to go right through the floor of the upstairs apartment because I was scaling this up a bit and most of the car roofs, you know, depending, like if you get an old model T or something, your roof is like right up into here in the door. So having that on a hoist would push the car up through the, the bottom floor. So I'm not really sure just what the inside of this cab company would look like if there would be apartments up top or, you know, if the highest this goes is just up with a floor jack, that's not too bad. Even ramps wouldn't be too bad in the height, but, you know, getting a, an elevated floor jack that's supposed to go up the height of, you know, enough to get another car underneath it would push it up into the roof. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to treat the second floor in this right now. But what I really want to do in this video is show you, you know, basically what I've done to the front. Now, after making that video where I showed you how to scale up 187th HO scale buildings into 124th scale, basically what I did is I took one of the walls and I made this nice brick pattern into the wall. I can't remember if I showed this on a YouTube video from before or not, but I did use it in a background on some of my thumbnails. And that really just leaves me with this one piece, which is the front of the garage. And I need to detail this up in order to make it match out the little 187th scale model of it. So what I'll do is we'll take a look at all the measurements that were involved and the conversions, and then we'll take a look at my template for the front of this styrofoam wall. What I have here is a little sheet of dimensions that I made for this garage, entitled Nady's Garage Dimensions from Left to Right. So I'm working from this edge and moving across here, and I'm using my little ruler scale again, and this is divided into 60 fourths up along the top, for uh, metric and imperial, and down below it is in millimeters for your centimeters. So there's 10 millimeters there for one centimeter, two centimeters, and so on, and then all your measurements. So uh, 8 sixteenths, 16 sixteenths, 24 sixteenths, there's sorry, 60 fourths, 32 60 fourths, 40 60 fourths, 48 60 fourths, and 56 60 fourths. And it's really kind of hard to see all these little lines in here on the scale, but I do my best. So here's the cheat sheet that I made up. Actually, it's, it's just an explanation. So we've got, for example, I'm not going to go through every measurement on here, but by taking the little scale, uh, I did the, all this in Imperial, 
So for metric, I don't really have those written down. But I used my 60 force and counted out, going from left to right across the bottom first and then up the second story. So just as an example, we have the bricks to the garage door opening, which is from here to here, uh, not including the molding. So just there to there. And that was 3 sixteenths on this. And then I divided 3 by 16 and I got the uh, decimal place. Multiplied that number by 87 to get this into 1 to 1 scale. So on the model here it is 3 sixteenths. But then multiplying it by 87 will give you this distance in the real world. Which is 16 inches uh, by 0.3125. I forget what that is. <laughs> and then you divide that by 25. So now you've got it in full scale in 87th, and now you reduce it down to 25th scale. And I ended up with this decimal place, which is the equivalent of 2130 seconds. And then that brings up that scale again. And in 125th scale, that would be 2132s from here to here. Here we have that front wall. Now this is what I cut out before in styrofoam. So it's basically that kind of castellated top, or however you want to describe this. And then the rest is just a blank piece of styrofoam. So after making all those measurements, I took a bunch of just straight white paper, printer paper, and I taped it all together and I drew on it and I cut the top to go along with that styrofoam relief. So now we're starting to see what this thing actually looks like when you get it into that 125th scale. So here are the upper story windows, and I made some little lines on here just so I knew which ones were the windows. Now I didn't put in the, the cross frame detail in here yet. I can do that a little later on when I'm actually building the model. But for now, these are all reference points. And I will have to measure this out to cut out my rectangles in here through the styrofoam because we want actual windows. And then I also made up that little sign thing that goes up along the top here. And that would coincide with our model, which has it right up in here. So you see, I've basically improved or enlarged, not improved, but enlarged the actual little HO scale building with all its measurements into 124th. And if you want me to write down my measurements in uh, the comments section down below, or in the description section down below, please let me know in the comments, because there's a lot of measurements and a lot of conversions that I did. So if you want it, let me know. But uh, basically, I'll just bring this down here a bit. So now here you can see the garage door, and again, well, there it is there. So you can see our 187th scale building actually fits into that garage door, which is really interesting. But uh, basically, I didn't do the detail on the door because I'm not really sure how this thing would open and how I'm going to use it in my diorama. Because I can go a couple of ways. The first is to have, uh, you know, try to make this door look like that, and then build the rails so that it would go up on an internal rail in here and then, you know, flip up like that, you know, up into the building here. Another way is like my dad's garage. And what he did is he's got uh, wheels on top of the doors and he, he's cut the doors into slats like that. And he's got a handle here. And the door is on a rail that goes into the building off over this side and along the wall. And you hold the handle and when you want to open the door, you move the whole thing this way and it's like rotating on a curved track into the back of the building. And then the other way I'm thinking is just to have a door cut in half and then these would swing open, you know, that way sort of thing. And uh, that would solve a few problems if I just had them swing open because there's always that, you know, thing where you have to build rails and tracks and all that to make it believable. And I don't know if I'm, I'm not a garage door mechanic, so 
I don't really know how that would all work out properly, you know? Maybe I could take a look at some of the other HO scale buildings and see if they have a flip-up door, and maybe I can kind of duplicate whatever they're doing in there. Uh, maybe I could just have two pieces of plastic with, uh, you know, sort of a U-shaped curve in them, and then put a pin at the top of the door, and uh, use those side pieces so when you lift the door up, it goes up, you know, like that sort of thing. I don't know. Or, I guess, up in a curve and like that. Uh, maybe that's the way. But anyway, over here we've got the lower window, and we also have the door and that little window up top, which is just like that. So again, really neat stuff. Uh, what you can do with enlarging scales. I also have the, uh, you know, blank bar pieces across the top here. Or, however, that molding, I guess goes up along there, and that thinner one that's underneath the windows, and the one that's above the windows on the second story. So again, really neat stuff. The only th other thing I might need to do or want to do is make the little diamonds that go up in here, which are the ones that go into here, which I haven't really mapped out, because I'm not too sure. And uh, the other thing I'm thinking is just cutting, well, cutting this open on the styrofoam, right? And then making the doors out of cardboard and maybe the window frames out of some balsa wood or something. But at any rate, this is the beginning of Nady's Garage. Just so you get a sense of how well this worked out, what I have here is an HO scale standing figure. And if I put the HO sca uh, standing figure right here, we get an idea of where this HO figure is in relation to the building. So I'm trying to get the base not to be there because it'll add a little height into the figure. But basically what we see is the figure's got the elbows down and the elbows are basically close to that door frame edge and the head is right in the window. So now we have Natey here on my sketch. And if I put Nady's feet bottoms right there, you can see that her head is in the window. Now, Nady might be a little bit smaller, and I apologize for this being so dark today. I don't know what's going on with my lighting. Anyway, you can see where Nady is in relationship to this door, which is essentially where this figure is in relationship to the 187th scale door. But it seems to me that this door in 24 scale got wider somehow, or maybe the figures are not as posed as the HO figure, or maybe the HO figure is not quite 100% 187th scale, might be 185th or something weird, manufacturer mistake, but close enough. And then here you see the relationship to the window. So again, it's very similar. Like, the bottom of the frame is sort of into Nady's hips, and here it's sort of into this figure's hips as well. And their head is a certain height from the top of the window, and same as Nady's. So it all ended up being pretty much proportional. Now, instead of taking and cutting through the pattern and all that, I am going to just simply take my scale ruler and measure the template itself and then work my measurements straight off the ruler measurements, because I've already done the conversion, and I will set them into the styrofoam, just marking them off using a sharpie and a ruler and all that sort of thing, and marking it right onto the styrofoam so that I can cut it straight out of the styrofoam and leave the pattern, because you never know. I might want to build another one of these buildings in the future or something, and if I hack up the pattern, then I might not have all the proper dimensions and everything else that the pattern entailed originally. Whereas if I take and duplicate this pattern right onto the styrofoam with the sharpie and whatnot, I can just cut it out of the sheet of styrofoam that I'm currently using and not have to worry about ever wrecking the pattern. Here we have the full building drawn up with a paper template. And as you can see, we got the door and a window above. There's a window in the door and a window here, the door itself for the garage, and three windows up above, as well as the sign here. And I've gone around the perimeter with a little bit of a ledge area in here or something. 
end. What we can do now is just remove the paper. And now you can see that I've gone with a blue Sharpie and made all my lines in here. I did not include the sign because I can always cut that out of a piece of cardboard later. And I didn't include the window on the door here because this whole area will be cut out. And same with the windows and our garage door in here. And what I will do is make some cardboard strips. Just cut them out into these sizes here and then glue them in in place. I'm also thinking of putting some wood here on this where it's all cut out because it's pretty rough in there. And right here I've got this little piece. And I think if I cut this window out and, uh, you know, then cut the door out, this is going to break in here or be very jagged and awful because I don't have a Proxon wire cutter. So I'm just going to use a hobby knife and hopefully it will be sharp enough not to tear the edges up. I can also use some sandpaper in here just to refine it. But all these little strips will be bits of cardboard or balsa wood or something like that. And uh, that will raise these up a bit and make it look a little more detailed. Here we've got our building with the doors and window areas cut out. And now you can see the difference that it makes. Now, unfortunately, doing this with a hobby knife really leads into some rough edges right into here. And it doesn't really look all that great. So normally I would sandpaper these down. And I'll still do that a little bit. Because uh, actually if I turn this over, you can see, you know, just how jagged it is in this window area. And that is from the knife kind of exploding the back end out. But overall I think I did a pretty decent job of this. I even got a little bit here under the door as a bit of a step or a stoop or whatever. And then I'll have to uh, cut some cardboard now to go around in here and along these edges and just make it look really nice. I also didn't do the little sign in here because then I can just do it out of cardboard. But basically this is the way it is right now. Now one of the other things I'll have to do is scribe in the bricks. And uh, luckily for me, there is not very many areas that need the brick, just around here and on the door edges and up in here. And then that's basically these are almost, I wouldn't really say strips of wood, but some kind of long molding in here. And that will also be raised up. And then I need some brick in here. But it's not as big as a surface as the sidewall was, which was all brick everywhere. And then what I want to do is try to hot glue onto here. I'll have to do a test strip and uh, make sure that the hot glue gun doesn't just melt this all and destroy it. But somehow I don't think it will. But overall, yeah, this is looking pretty good for just roughing it out. So what I've done here is I've decided that this little end will be a little too flimsy on its own. So I've countersunk a little bit here and made a notch into the end. And that is because I'm going to stick a foam core door into here. And then on this side, once that door is glued in, I can cut some strips that thickness and then glue them to the back of the door. I also noticed that I did a little sanding in here and I kind of erect the thickness right in this here. So I will have to build that up somehow and uh, hopefully make this passable. So here we have the front of the garage, and now I've cut that uh, piece right out of the back, made up that channel inside the door frame, and here's what was left over. <laughs> and uh, this is really flimsy, but you can see the thickness in there. So what I did for that was I have a piece of this, actually a full sheet, this is that foam core board you pick up at the dollar store for next to nothing. So I measured the distance from the thickness of this. And then I uh, used those compass points and I basically went along the edges and etched down so that this was uniform all the way around. Then I took my hobby knife and I first cut this way into the foam instead of down, because if I was cutting down, and I went too far, I'd actually cut this whole thing right out, and I don't want that. So measure down from the back this way to where you want to be, and then cut along this way with your knife, and then follow up by cutting here, because when you do that, your cut going in this way 
it will meet the cut coming down this way and then it'll pop out at that thickness. So now let's test the door in this frame. And if I measured this all right, which I did, fits in there quite nicely, quite snug actually. And now I can turn this over. And there you can see the door nicely nestled into its little home. Now what I'm thinking is maybe I can do the same on this door over here. And that of course is the front door. And remember it's got that little window that comes across right about like that. And I think if I do that though I'm going to lose this little nice piece of foam that I tried to save for the little step. But maybe what I could do is just cut a notch out of here and then use this foam core board and uh, cut it to the thickness of that notch. So it would be sticking out basically about this thick, you know, to the uh, bottom of the door. So that might work. And then in the windows, I was looking at the popsicle sticks I have and they're not the full half inch because this is half inch styrofoam. They're less than half an inch, but it actually looks right because if I glued that popsicle stick to the edge, you know, flat with this, there's a little bit that's left on the bottom down below. And if I, uh, use, you know, brick the back side of this with the brick technique what, that I'm going to do in here, you know, it, and uh, bring some of the brick lines out this way. When the popsicle stick covers that, it might actually look like the way wood actually goes into these window frames when you're in a brick building like that. So I think that's something I might try as well. Now the other nice thing about putting in the styrofoam sheet into the back is that I've given the structure its rigidity back. Like there's no way I can move this little piece, whereas before with it out, as you can see, it was quite flimsy. So again, a little bit of uh, ingenuity and you get your strength back in your styrofoam. Now we've got the door notched in and an actual white piece of foam core just to fill that void. I will be cutting out the rest of it, you know, like that door. And the other thing I did is I cut a notch for the front stoop part or step or whatever this is. And now you can just sink it in there with another piece of the white foam board. Now when I glue this together with the hot glue gun, I notice that this bottom piece is just popping out a little bit. So I will have to glue it from this side first and then add the glue and just push against here just to make sure it's all nice and tight so that this is all nice and square along this one edge. Now if I just turn this over, you can see where I also cut the door frame out and I did it in that same style with the compass points and just went along the edges and then cut this way first and then cut down. Uh, the only thing is it was really hard to cut up in here because the hobby knife blade, as you can see, is longer than the door frame. So I had to lay it down flatter, of course, cut from this edge. That's the other reason why I cut off that little piece from before is just I could not get the knife in there. Another thing I could do is actually sink this down further uh, so that it's closer along this edge than it is. Might be a bit too thick, I'm not too sure. I was thinking that, uh-oh, you know, the door swings outward and that was a fire safety thing, or is a fire safety thing in our modern world. Because when your building is on fire, the last thing you want is a door that swings inward to the building because people want to push the door outward to get out. You know, it's a natural panic, you know, when you're in a panic, it's a natural thing to do. But then I realized that this door is sunken in into a frame, so I don't think it would swing outward either. And back in the day, the 20s and the 30s and that, they had the doors swing inward like in a house. They didn't really think about, you know, fire and swinging the door outward. It wasn't until much later that it was proven that uh, having the door hinging inward was a fire trap. 
So, um, unfortunately, Nadie's new garage is going to be a bit of a fire trap, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I mean, the only other way I could do it is just, I don't glue the door sort of in a frame to the outside, but I don't know. I think I'll just leave it the way it is, the way that, uh, that our company here built this thing. Here we have the front door for our building, and I did quite a bit of work in here. So, of course, I obviously cut out the squares and the rectangles up here for our windows. But then I also cut a bit of balsa wood at 1 16th and uh, made these runners here. Now, these are, of course, the, you know, one by fours or whatever that are around the door. The other thing that I did is to get rid of this, you know, really crappy looking edge down in the window itself, I took a piece of cardboard and cut a strip and then just sort of scribed it in the corners and or scored it in the corners, I guess. And then I was able to fold it around in here and apply glue up along that edge and then just squeeze it in place. And down below, I did the same sort of thing, but I used some more balsa wood. And the only thing I have to do now is just make the door handle down here with the doorknob. So how does this stack up with the door from the model? Well, I think I did a pretty good job of the two, as you can see there. That would be these pieces of wood right around here are in there, up around into the brick. And the other thing I did was on the building itself, remember just a little while ago there, I said that uh, I thought the door was sunken in a little too far. Well, I took my compass points around again and etched it out, cut down deeper. So now that door relief is a lot lower. And how does it look with the actual building itself? I would say that it fits in there pretty nicely move that light a little bit there. But yeah, there it is. Looking good. Looking like it should. <laughs> Here we have Nady's garage after I've glued on some balsa wood strips. Now I did cut these from a sheet of balsa wood and I made sure that they measured up on either end and then cut across. Same with down here under the window. And then above the garage door there's also a strip of balsa wood there. And then here I've got strips of cardboard, and that's because the thickness is different. The balsa wood, of course, is higher than the cardboard, but it should give the right look. And here I've got the door almost finished. I just need to make a doorknob right here. And the other thing I did was added a little step right here on the door, which I made from another sheet of the foam core. And then I cut some of that cardboard here into a thin strip and went around. Now one thing I had to do was use my sandpaper block and just sand it. And that actually sanded down the cardboard so it's nice and level in here. And another part that I did was I added some cardboard oh, this, okay, up along the top here just to get rid of that ripped up, you know, star foam edge. And I think I'll... I'll also do the same thing in here under the door just to true all this up and make it look good. And uh, in the windows, of course, I still got to use, uh, I want to use those popsicle sticks in there and make the window crosses or whatever. But what I want to do next is cut a strip of this cardboard and start putting it up here along the top. And that'll cover any of the edges here especially because I bent the cardboard around in here and there's just a little bit of a curved gap up in these tiny little holes. So there you can see that a little bit better. It's not like a nice 90 degree into there. I did try to push it in, but somehow it just came up. So that's what we will do together next is just cut some of these strips in here. So in order to make those strips, first off, I've got a nice piece of hardboard to cut on. And I've got a piece of cardboard. This is from a bubble tea uh, popsicle. <laughs> now, it would be nice if I actually had just straight up cardboard on both sides, but there is a printed image on the other side, so I just have to deal with that. So next up, we need a Sharpie, a ruler, and our knife. 
And for measuring before, I found out that this is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So what I would do is just go along the edge here with my Sharpie, finding the edge and lining it up. Now this could be an issue. So let's just zoom our camera in a bit. This could be an issue for me because I'm so far away from the camera, I can't really see if I'm lining this up or not. But I do believe it is right there. So I'm going to make one mark there and one mark here at 3 sixteenths. And then I can take my ruler and just line up the marks and then take my knife and score across a couple times until I cut through on the cardboard. And you got to be careful with plastic rulers because if you do actually curve the knife you can cut little gouges out of here. I do have a steel ruler and I think I'm going to go and search that up and see what I did with it. There we go, I found my steel ruler and this is actually better because now I won't cut the plastic. And it also has cork underneath so I, that will uh, prevent it from slipping which my plastic ruler has a big tendency to do. So what I would do now is just line up these marks just like so and then drag the knife over the top. So here we go. There it is. Now, that should line up, and I do have another strip cut. You might have to cut several of these strips to go up and around what you need to do. But basically, this is the same technique I used with that balsa wood and the other cardboard. And what we have now is some nice uh, 3 16 strips. So one of the other things I found when I was actually looking for that ruler is my little collection of round pins. So you just pull one of them out. And now you have a pin. And notice this little end on here. That is perfect for our door handle on the door. It's actually quite huge. <laughs> now, where's the door? Oh, it's way down there. Hang on. Okay, so here we are. Now, I don't really want to punch this through until I make some measurements. But here. Let's just put it there just for pretend. Yeah, that looks about like the right uh, the right sort of distance for a door handle, like the right diameter for a knob. So what I'll do is I will make a little rectangular piece and drill a little hole in it. Actually two holes, one for this and one for the keyhole. And then that should complete our door. So next up we want to cut this here and uh, we want to add in a 45 degree angle into each of the corners which is kind of maddening but uh, we'll get it done. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Sterling Set Mathematical Instruments and this is from my aunt. This is from 1934 I believe or something like that. 38 maybe? Early 40s? But at any rate, we have a triangle. Now this is still included in geometry sets or mathematical instrument sets. Basically, what I'll do here is grab one of these cutout cardboard strips that we did, and I will line it up here. Oh, that's good alignment. And I'm going to make a mark there, just so I know where that's going to be. And then I can line up my 45 degree angle with the bottom edge of this strip and just get it on that little point. Try to align this perfectly here. Of course I would recommend just doing this down on the cardboard. Actually, let's do that. Okay. So, let's bring the camera closer. All right, hopefully this doesn't lose focus. <laughs> I do have that issue. Okay, so here we go. And now I'll draw the 45 degree angle in here. Then I can take my hobby knife or even a pair of scissors 
We'll just line that up and rock the blade up and down a little. And drag it in. So there's a 45 degree angle on our little strip. And so now what we would do is bring it in. Now what I like to do actually is turn this upside down. So now it'll reverse onto this side. Oops. And that's so that the paper is actually contacting the styrofoam. And then we'd slip that in there. And I'm going to measure outward. I can also just use the Sharpie. And make sure I measure this. I get this aligned perfectly. And then I can draw it to the edge. And I can cut that with scissors. And then what I'll do is put a little glue on here and we'll glue it down. Now what I'm using to glue this down is some Dura Pro Carpenters glue. And it's got quite a good strength down here, up to 3,500 pounds and a quick setting time. So I'm finding it pretty good. And the other piece I need is a little bit of uh, good old toilet paper. And that's to wipe up some excess glue. So just rip off a little piece of this here and we'll just kind of ball it up a little bit. And then I've got my little piece of uh, cardboard strip. So we just open this glue and bust off any bits of scum off the top of the cap there. And then we'll just be very careful. It's got a nice little angled top to it as well. And then we can just easily push that down. Uh, I can take my little pointer stick here and just smear the glue out a little. Something like that. And wipe off some of this excess here onto our toilet paper. And then position in the little piece of cardboard with the fuzzy paper side down and that slick side up. And try to align this corner so that the top right in here is up against that edge and then you want to maneuver this around just to make sure it's flat with this edge there don't be too worried about this edge over here because if it's sticking out a little bit we can always hit that with the sandpaper and then we can just squish the glue down a little bit and then you want to wipe it off, especially where it's going to contact the next piece coming up. And that should be just like that. So you see, you see how easily that just glues down. And uh, of course, the carpenter's glue will take about 24 hours to completely cure. But it's pretty well on here in a few minutes, you know, just depending. And then keep that toilet paper handy and watch that nothing is squeezing out along the tops here for glue or along the bottom. But you can always wipe that off with that toilet paper. Next up, we need to cut the angled piece that goes from here up into here. And it's going to have two 45 degree angles at the same, you know, direction point. And I've already cut that piece and here it is now. And you can see just how nicely this all fits in together at that angle. Now, after I glue this down, I will need a piece that goes in from here to here and angles this way. And then I need another piece of cardboard that has that same angle there and another angle here. So basically the mirror of this one. And then I will continue snaking this thing around. But basically, this is the concept. Just uh, measure out, cut a 45 degree angle, measure up, cut another 45 degree angle and so on. And just glue as you go. That way uh, you won't confuse up all the little pieces. Or you could decide just to cut all these out and then glue them and size them as you go. So here we are after maybe 20-30 minutes at the halfway point. And you can see that this is really picked up the look of this building. Now there are a couple little gaps and a little bit of an irregularity in this piece. But I've never really seen anybody cut these perfectly at 45 degree angles anyway. So, you know, it adds a little bit of realism in that manner. This thing should look good once we get down on the other side here and once it's all complete. But I thought I'd just show you that for now. 
Here's the building after adding in all the pieces up along the top with our cardboard cut at the 45 degree angles. And I also cut pieces in here just to cover up the real roughness of cutting the styrofoam. And there you can see it looking really good. Now these actually look like either steel or metal edge pieces. And then of course we've got our door in there as well. I know I've shown this door a few times. <laughs> I just like how it turned out. But yeah, that is basically it. So the next step is to cut the bricks and make them match the other panel. And I've already started to mark off little areas here. And what I do is just take my ruler across and even using one of these pointers, go along the ruler just to sink in the lines of the brick. And then I come in and go up this way as well every other, you know, spaced in between, so that the bricks look like they're stacked on each other, much like you do to strengthen up a Lego wall. So now for the next part of this build, I took an ordinary pencil sharpener, and I grabbed one of these skewer things, and I stuck it in the end, and I just sharpened it a little bit, and I made myself this little blunted out tool right here, so keep that in mind. And then I used our maths to scale up the bricks in here into 1 24th scale. And I used these little points to come up with the length of the bricks. And then of course the ruler for the height. And then once I had the height, I took a strip of cardboard and I took my little blue Sharpie and I made a bunch of marks up along the strip in the uh, location of those bricks and then using my ruler and this little new tool that i made i was able to line up the bricks uh, both horizontally and vertically and in the end this is what we got so let's just wind this back now you can see of course the building's upside down but I have all the bricks in the bottom part and I still need to do the top part of the building. But overall, I mean, take a look at how great that turned out. There we go. That's right side up now. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below as to how good this looks compared with the bricks of the building in 187th scale, HO scale. And... Uh, let me know what you think of my version of this. Now another thing I did is I took a little bit of tin foil and rolled it up into a ball and rolled it along this edge to give it sort of a rough texture on the bricks so they're not perfectly smooth. But I, <laughs> it was kind of a little bit tough because once I crushed this down I had to redo all the lines again in order to make this work out. And then over here I decided not to do that <laughs> because it was double work. But uh, take a look at, at how that looks. See if I can get both, both sets of bricks. The HO scale there, and then the 124th scale here. And of course, we still have more renovations to do on this garage before Nady can actually take possession of it. We have to finish off the windows, and then I need this pattern here onto the door here because this is still pretty smooth and then of course getting our bricks up into here up into the rest of that building so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to stop the video for now and do a part two because basically this <laughs> this has taken quite a long time and it's, i've even used up like 45 minutes of the video oh but just getting back to this so there's that strip and then once I had the marks here, when this was still flat and unbricked, I basically transferred the lines over, just like that, and then over here again. And then that way I was able to line up the ruler like this, and then use my new tool and just go across, oops, wrong tool, <laughs> just go across like that, indenting it as I went along. So just as a demonstration of this, I've got this little scrappy piece of styrofoam I found. So if I want bricks on here, I'll just do a couple. I would go, let's see, whoops, one, two, three, sort of like that. And I'll just line this up on the top again. Move it over here. 
So we go on one, two, three. Okay, now my issue is I'm very far away, so I can't really see what I'm doing. All right. So get rid of the Sharpie. Then we're going to use that little tool I made up. And we will line up these marks as best as I can see them over everything. I don't really mind if this is awful. So there's one. Two, down at the bottom, for three, okay, yeah, I'm already going offline, but that's okay. So then I've got my little uh, points here, and I'm going to go off the edge, so we're going one, and then up at that top, and then let's do another one there, and there. Now, in the middle, you see I haven't scribed anything, so I'll take my points, and I'm going to go between that line and that line, just like this. So now I've got a new spot for those points to follow, there and there, and then on the bottom here, and here. Maybe that's enough for now. And then we'll take the tool, and just go like this to enlarge that gap. See how easy this is? You could do it at home too. You can do this at home, kids. And now we've got a bit of brick going on right there. So we just move this up to the camera and there you can see the brick. So again, really simple stuff to do. It's just uh, repetitive when you're doing it on that big building, but just keep going over and over and eventually you'll get it all bricked up just like I did. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you Natie's brand new garage. And I'm sure she's really going to like starting up her mechanic business there, as well as the tire changing business. So if you're building your own little garage diorama, hopefully what you saw today can help you out. And if you'd like to see some of the other equipment that I've built for Natie, check out this great video coming up here. And don't forget to like and subscribe and also check our website out by clicking this icon right here. You can also find us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.